All right, so we are back, part two. Um, this podcast is going to talk about some current events that uh, happened this week. Um, see what everybody thinks about that. Get okay. a little laughs. Um, not too much news. Don't want to kind of bore you with some information, but one of the one of the biggest uh, topics that that just baffled my mind is a girl gets fired from working at Taco Bell mm-hmm. because she did porn. <laughs> okay, at Taco Bell. <laughs> I know, I know what you're talking about, but like, why does that baffle your mind? She was wearing a mask. <laughs> How did they know it was her? So, okay, so here's the concept. Here's the, I recognize those eyes. Here, here, here's the, here's the, here's the, I, don't, I don't have the article in front of me, but I, again, I know about this because of the Taco Bell group. Everyone was posting, like, this woman works, works for Taco Bell and she got fired because of porn. Uh, she lives in a small town in Arkansas. One of the southern states. Oh, so everyone like, knows everyone there. Yeah, there's like 800 people, and uh, she used to do porn, stopped doing porn because of COVID, so it wasn't like, she doesn't want to be near a bunch of people. She worked Fun. Taco Bell, so she worked, started working at Taco <laughs> Bell part-time, just doing the drive through window. I don't know, whatever. Taco Bell is less contact than porn. I will grant her that. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope. Yeah. I, yo, yo. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh, she disclosed this in the interview with the manager. The manager said it wouldn't be a problem. Fine. Apparently, she got a phone call 30 minutes before she was supposed to start a shift from the, the manager saying that she was not working there anymore because a customer had called or emailed saying, I will not shop at a Taco Bell with who that supports someone that used to work in porn or something of that nature so she's like what <laughs> like, i mean i i think that's bogus i think I, that's yeah I think that's, that's messed up i, I mean agree wasn't like she was doing porn at the time yeah bell. like when I, when I saw the headline of woman fired from taco bell for porn i thought she either was shooting porn or showing porn or had porn in the taco bell and i was like this would be clickbaity bullshit where it's like, oh, clearly she was wrong. And you go, oh, no, it's clearly some guy that has nothing better to do with his time than to judge other people. He goes, oh, I like to touch myself while looking at her. And I can't eat and like watch porn at the same time, so fuck it. I guess I better just get her fired. Definitely not Zach and Mary make a porn. No, guess. definitely not. <laughs> I love that you are now making Kevin Smith movie references because you've like been on a binge to catch up. I That's seen... actually the first one I saw. I haven't seen that movie yet. Because of Seth Rogen, not right. because of Kevin Smith. I didn't even know Kevin Smith directed it. I, I, didn't, I didn't even know. I was waiting for you to go, not because of Kevin Smith, but because it talks about porn. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even know that was Jay. Or uh, the guy from Clerks. He got shit on, literally. <laughs> that shit is hilarious. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> it, is, it is funny. Yes, <laughs> I, that movie. That movie. I like that movie. I I didn't know Kevin Smith actually wrote and directed it until like later. Like I saw it and I was like, man, that's a good movie. Right, oh, we, let's take a sidetrack. We're talking about Zach and Mary making porno. We're talking about <laughs> Taco Bell. Taco, <laughs> Taco Bell. Taco Bell denies you from being in porn. I personally think that's really fucked up. Even I mean, if she was doing porn at the time, like what what does that yeah, matter? Even like, if that she's has nothing to do. Even if she's me. actively. Like, this is a minimum wage job. It's not like you're representing a company, really. I guess you're representing Taco Bell, so, I guess. But like. So he, here's... The problem is that it's one of those the right-to-work states where you have the right to work, but the company also has the right to fire you for whatever reason they want, and they don't have to disclose it. An at-will employer. Yeah, so... Right. She's let go because of this. If they were smart, they would have phrased it as, uh, they would have phrased it differently than a customer, like, complained that you, they wouldn't have told her it's not going to be a problem and then made it be a problem. They would have come up with something better. They're just that dumb. If they were smarter, uh, they would have said it's because you admitted to committing illegal acts because technically porn, any sort of sex work, be it like what is normally legal, you can't do that in the state. So if they had said that's the reason, 
fine. I wouldn't agree with it, but I can understand why they would do it. But they're like, oh, no, uh, this customer says that he saw you in a porn, and, you know, he complains. So He's a regular, so. We have to get rid of it. <laughs> like, I'm a regular at Taco Bell, and I can't imagine, even if there was somebody there, and I was like, oh, man, that guy is like a white supremacist, and I called in, and I go, he's still working there? Like, I guess even if I stop going to that Taco Bell, they're not going to lose that much business. Right. Like... <laughs> So, so would you would you say let's all stop eating Taco Bell so she gets her job back? I don't know about that. Uh, Taco Bell. <laughs> hey, Sorry, I would, I, would say, I would say this: boycott that Taco Bell franchise because why punish all the franchises for one franchise's? I can get action? behind that. Or if this is a corporate run Taco Bell, because I would not be nowhere near there. <laughs> or if this, or if this is a corporate run Taco Bell, only go to the ones that are franchised and not the corporate ones. I got, I don't know which one this is. So I I, I do think that's bogus. Like especially like she was she was in porn and she's basically trying to better herself. It wasn't like she did porn and was like, let me go ahead and sell some drugs. Like she decided like, hey. I don't want to catch COVID. Let me get a real job as shitty as Taco working at Taco Bell is. Right. You know, like, well, I get it. Okay, I'm not even not even that, because I will say, I, I'll, I'll be a flat out say it, sex work is a real job, regardless. True, that's true. Like, you work on OnlyFans, you're, like, <clears throat> you're dancing in a strip club, you're, a, like, an escort, like, anything, like, sex work is a job. The this, this shaming of it is the whole problem with, in this case, Alabama or Arkansas, whichever southern-ass state it was. But if they tell you it's not a problem, it should not be a problem. That's why there's a lawsuit involved, when she was hired and disclosed all of this ahead of time. I, I, I don't disagree with you. I totally agree with it. Because she was up front. It's not like she hit it. It's not like she was doing that on the side. Again, right. like, I mean, again, at the end of the day, too, even if she was doing it on the side, let's say she had an OnlyFans while she worked at Taco Bell, as long as she's not putting Taco Bell into her videos, like, it shouldn't, it well, shouldn't matter. again, the argument of it's illegal in that state. However, it's the equivalent of saying, admitting, like, yeah, I had a bunch of speeding tickets, or I had a DUI, like, I did a thing that was illegal, I'm not actively doing it. I'm, and I'm disclosing this before the job, and they go, that's not a problem, and they hire you. Then they're firing her for the thing that they said wasn't a problem. Yeah. I didn't even know that it was illegal in that state. I didn't. It mentions it in the article that I read how, like, it's technically illegal in that state. Blah, blah, blah. That's blah, super blah. wild. That's yeah. illegal. It's not super wild because there's a lot of, like... Southern Bible thumping. It's not necessarily Southern Bible. There's a lot, like... America has this, this very, like, religious, like, streak through it that even people that, like, the general public considers pretty liberal are uptight by most other country standards. It's true. Very true. Yeah, like, think about, like, anywhere in Europe that you go is much more laid back about this kind of stuff, sexuality. Especially Japan. Japan has... Oh. Porn at 7-Eleven. Like, sure. you can buy porn at 7-Eleven. I mean, you used to be able to do I that. I might have bought one. <laughs> Maybe it well, might be in my drawer as we speak, <laughs> just because. But yeah, they got like vending machines with like panties with dookies in them. Like Japan's a wild town, <laughs> man. What a wild place. That, that reminds me of a story. I should tell a story about Seven Eleven porn. Oh. Word up. Please do. <laughs> so back in the day, Seven um, Eleven used to sell porno magazines and. Um, there was the one time the WWE diva Tori Wilson was on the cover of Playboy and I was going to get it signed because she was doing an autograph signing in town so wait when you say in town do you mean she her plane was landing at O'Hare and you went and said no signs? it was at Tower Tower Records okay. in just well sure. back this is how old it was was Tower Records way close so she was doing an autograph signing in Tower Records um, so all my friends like tell me hey I, I don't have time to pick up this Playboy. Can you pick it up for me so we can all get it signed? So Did you I, have to go buy 30 Playboys? No, I bought, I bought five Playboys <laughs> at at 7-Eleven. And, and it was funny. The guy was like, oh, you want five? I'm like, yeah, I need five. And so then he's like, okay, okay. So he like, gives me the five Playboys. And he like looks around. <laughs> and he brings up this other nudie magazine. It was like, big, I don't know. It was like... like 
It was worse than like penthouse, <laughs> and it was like it, 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 was, it was one that was like not even like you can't even pretend it's for the articles. It was yeah. just like full like just spread like <laughs> hey you can see from from one end right up through her throat like you're <laughs> he was like he was like you want this one and he like listen I'm like no man I just need the Playboys man <laughs> <laughs> don't you understand why does he have these are collectible <laughs> he's like he's like he like looked around make sure nobody side hustle you want this one <laughs> he's got a secret stash of super porn Yo, I'm fucking crying. For, the, for the connoisseur <laughs> This the discriminating one. gentleman. I can understand that there were five different Playboys. Like, oh, this guy really likes his porn, but is the five same? No, you were gonna you were gonna masturbate so furiously. This one was worn out, but I'm on to number two. Crying. That page is too sticky, my guy. <laughs> Hell no. So These pages just stuck together. Move on to issue two. <laughs> that's my that's my seven eleven. This was the other back of porn story. Like, I, just, I remember that like. <laughs> I still have that ma- autograph magazine too. <laughs> God, uh, I don't even. I would like to take a peek. <laughs> anyway, <Anyways. laughs> I remember they used to sell porn at like gas stations and stuff as well. So when those Dexics were on tour, there was at some point where we stopped at a gas station, and Adam T comes out and he goes, "Hey, I got porn," and we're all like, "Why? You're traveling? Like there are two cars that are traveling." And each of four people in them, like, where are you going to be, like, free time, like, that you think you're going to, like, start masturbating? We're going to be on the road for the next eight hours. Dude, you... All right. Marine Corps, you'd be surprised. I man. mean, ooh, every time we'd be traveling in 12 vehicles next to each other. Sure. Oh, my God. This was more of a don't tell us about it type of thing. <laughs> Why are you telling us? Uh, That's what I said. And then he, shows, and he shows it what it is, and it was like... Now, we're all between, at this point, 18 and 22. He pulls out this porn and it is over 60 porn. Mm-hmm. He bought a granny porn. That's lit. Because actually. he thought it was hysterical. <laughs> so he, it was just like a thing that he got as a gag, but it was a genuine like old lady porn magazine that he just left in the back of the Jeep Cherokee floating around with all the band equipment or people's luggage or whatever. Hell yeah. And it, That's there, lit. Yeah, so we're driving behind this and all of a sudden a sock flies out one of the windows and bounces off the front Nah, we know the car. come on, and I, I kid you not. So we get on the walkie and we go, funny. hey, uh, you guys just throw something out of the car? And you're like, no. Hold on. Yeah, Dennis apparently threw a sock out. You don't want to know what was in the sock. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. Then another sock came flying out yeah, that's and hilarious. did not hit the car. But apparently he uh, filled one sock with uh, semen and the second sock he decided to wipe his sweaty ass with. Because he had swamp ass, and only what do we do with this one sock? Better get rid of it. Smart man, but that dude uh, was going crazy. Yeah, holy shit! Yeah. That granny porn hit. I guess he's like, hey, when it went in Rome, <laughs> 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 I was like, what are you? Doing? <laughs> Two guys, your driver, and shotgun, Sophie asleep in the back, and then he was in the very back, asleep. That is some very vile Marine Corps shit to be. Yeah, I was like, God Jesus damn it, Christ. Christ. Not thought, you. Not this Dennis. To clarify, not this Dennis. <laughs> I definitely thought that was only a military thing. That is heinous. Oh, no. That's, that's that is just... heinous to be doing in the civilian world. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was no excuse. There was literally zero excuse. It's not like, it's not like <laughs> we could get, like, pull over and get a hotel room like in two hours. Like, Oh, man. That's some funny shit. Yep. Holy shit. I do want to get me some granny porn magazines, though. So <laughs> I mean, that I don't is even work. on the list. You'd have to go to... Where would you even... eBay. Uh, yeah, I guess or <laughs> like, like an adult I, toy store, like, I know, like yeah, the porn shop. I guess you can't get them. You can't get magazines. Like Playboy even stopped printing magazines. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like who buys magazines anymore? Print is dead, baby. But you said on two podcasts ago that you can't masturbate to a picture. No, I didn't. I said I can if I'm in the field. I literally said that I beat my dick in a porta john two he pictures did, he with no. That. Because I had no service. All I had was pictures. Like, because you know how your iPhone offloads your videos and stuff yeah. to the cloud? So, like, you need service to bring it back down. Yeah, you have to, it. like, specifically store it to your hard drive. Otherwise, it goes yeah. to the cloud. So, I couldn't watch anything. This fool did not save any porn to his phone. Yeah. So, I didn't have the space. So, I was just looking at pictures. You feel me? Watching the video a little with a circle looking at it. All sad. He's There's like, nothing better than being addicted to that blue smell. You feel me? <laughs> See, let me tell you, what you got to do is you got to find, like, a really good clip, and you convert it to a GIF. 
you save that to your phone, and then you get an audio True. file, you play that, you have your headphones in, you get your audio file. You, you are a master at your craft, sir, because I did not even think about that at all. Thank you. <laughs> Video editing. Hey, to all the homies still in the core, you heard, you heard it here first. You know what you got to do when you go on ship? Do this, and you're straight. No more airdropping porn. You got it right here, dude. Let's go. <sighs> <laughs> so so if if it was your Taco Bell and you saw like hey I know that girl she I would keep going like, first off first of all it's my Taco Bell I'd be like Bella Danger is that you I, I don't, <laughs> this is nothing against the people at the Taco Bell but they're all wearing masks so like I can see their eyes and part of their hair that's what I'm saying like how who, am I gonna how, know who that how is did they, how did they report that like. And I, again, I don't know. I don't it probably know. had to be some like really creepy dude who was super into her shit. Yeah, like literally can see her by the back of her head. It's small. Like, it's small town politics bullshit. Where like, oh, it's a moral objection. Well, how do you know that she's in porn unless you're watching? Watching it. it. And he's probably met. He probably went there, made a pass at her. She denied him. He probably got pissed. Like a, like a freaking what was the word? Uh, an incel, right? It was due to like get mad. Yeah. People hate women because they turn them down all the time. Like that's basically what he is. I guarantee that's exactly these situations. Do we know it was a man who reported? I guess, I guess we're assuming. From the article, I believe it was a guy. Uh, in my mind, what I, I'd have to reread the article, but I, I mean, this is a few days ago. But if I remember, it, when I read it, I got the impression it was a guy that was in his 50s or 60s. So it, I don't necessarily think it was that he was watching porn. It's just that the town is so small that everybody knows everybody's business. Like, mm -hmm. the woman who worked at the Taco Bell... Mm -hmm. Is pretty sure she knows who reported her, but she can't get confirmation from Taco Bell because they won't release the name of the customer who called in. Right. So, I mean, it's, I guess it's right. kind of like high school with like there's this girl in school who did a porn and we all know who, who she was. Like, sure. If you have what? If, like, if it's like if you think of like that small of a town, if you have a pool of like eight hundred people, and of those eight hundred, like five hundred and fifty are adults, and the rest are all kids. Right. Like you're gonna go okay, so. I might not know them personally, but like, oh, that's the dude that does porn, or that girl with the blue hair d shot porn for a year and a half. Like, that's true. Because when I was in Twenty Nine Pounds, that's how it is. There's a guy named Porno Joe. Sure, everyone knows Porno Joe. I never met him, but I know Porno you Joe know who is. is right. right. So it's like, all right, <laughs> like I can understand how this guy, without having watched the porn, benefit of the doubt for the lack of, uh, whatever, for the sake of argument, maybe he didn't watch the porn. But why does he give a shit? Why does he care? And again, like, my other thing is, it's also, too, like, we don't know. I don't know what other states are. Like, we don't have dying in here, so how did he know it was her? Again, I I don't know. That's just something to ponder. Something, well, I read it, and I laughed. I, had to, I'm like, I feel bad for the girl, but, like, I still... It sounds like there's some sort of legal action that's now been started. I know she started a kick, uh, GoFundMe or something like sure. that. Sure. For what? <laughs> <laughs> she needs to pay her bills. She better get on that OnlyFans. She already got a phone. I think she started. Really? I think she started one up again. Her husband is also was like, "Yeah, this is bullshit." Like he's totally fine with the whole thing. Like right. her career, and he's like, "I don't understand what this guy's problem." I never understand. Really. So the whole GoFundMe thing—that's like another topic. Like anytime someone's going through something, they put a GoFundMe up, right? I, yes. And sometimes it's not always like, "Oh, I lost my job." It's like I'm going through something. Here's my cash app. Why am I going to give you money because you're going through something? Well, it doesn't even make sense. In my my personal opinion, mm -hmm. so I ain't gonna lie. I started GoFundMe for crypto when he needed his surgery. Well, that's a, that's and, one thing. Like, yeah, but like, you like specifically need money. Like you don't have enough money because you're you're whatever needs surgery or your mom has cancer. You don't have the money for chemo and this other stuff. That's different. I understand that. There's like people who are like on on Twitter who are like, oh, like I got uh, like discriminated against for this, this, and that. Here's my cash app and my GoFundMe. What is that gonna do for your discrimination? Like. This is not doing anything, but I'm just giving you money. For what? I just want to know who donates. Was no, like, I only got like two I've seen it. Like, uh, donate to It's funny. Down. So, like, like <laughs> that's fucked up. But I've seen it, like, uh, a lot of times when, uh, especially, like, with minorities, there will be white people who just jump on it and be like, oh, I'm so sorry that our people are like this. Here's this money, blah, blah, blah. It's like, why are you guys... They don't. It, no one cares about it's, you. It's, I'm sorry. It's, it's Stop like, trying to be a savior. Like, it's it's, it's the white guilt savior complex. Yeah. Of, like... like I mean, I currently have enough money to pay, like, bills and everything, and, like, I'm not going to be homeless, but I don't have an active job, 
But I have friends who work in theater and performance who don't. So they have started either, not go funding, but like OnlyFans or things where you have Patreons or you have subscriptions. Right. I'd be like, I'll subscribe to your thing. It's going to cost me three bucks a month or five bucks a month. Not going to impact my life, but I'm basically paying about 45 or 55 bucks spread out over a bunch of people. And you're supporting the home. Yeah, like, so it's like, like my, a bunch of my friends are like, or people, like friends or friends of friends who this is their only source of income. Like, sure. That, that I understand. That makes like, sense. Yeah, that makes like, sense. The GoFundMe thing, there's this, I don't want to say great because it's one of those terrible, like, uh, college improv videos where there are these stupid videos from, God, 10 years ago. But it's a parody of, like, the GoFundMe thing where, oh, yeah, we're going to talk about, like, GoFundMe. It's to be a promo. It's supposed to be the guy that runs GoFundMe. And he's like, oh, let's look at this one. And it's, oh, this guy has cancer and shit. He needs to pay his medical bills. And no one's giving money to that. And he is $2,000 away from, oh, this also expired. And apparently he died yesterday. (laughs) Like, just like. Yeah, that's that that on Twitter. Yeah, there's like three or four of them where they go through, and like the ones that like get money are the, hey, I want to go like skydiving. Right. And that's what it's supposed to be for. Like, just, hey, if everybody throws like five bucks at this person, they're going to do something crazy and post a video, and we all get to watch a video of whatever. And they're like, sure, I'll throw a couple bucks to watch somebody do something stupid. Like, I don't want to go skydiving, but if you're going to wear a GoPro and fall out of the sky, and I get to see a personalized video, yeah, maybe. Sure, it's going to cost me a dollar or two, and I got a couple extra bucks. Fine, but when you see those, you're like, "Oh, our country has no like healthcare system to protect people who get injured right. or fall through the cracks." It's literally, "Hey, strangers, I'm going to die. I can't afford my medication. My insurance got canceled when I got f- when I lost my job because I got sick." Like, uh... tough, bro. I have like, five, literally, <laughs> I have five bucks I can give you. I'm sorry, like. That five bucks won't save your life, but it would maybe like help right. some guy go GoPro skydiving. It's sad. It is sad. Like I mean, like I felt bad. Like I, I found a way to get crypto with surgery, and like the people who donated were like close friends of mine, and I felt bad because I was like, the whole point was trying to get strangers to like. Yeah. I don't want to take like twenty. Forty dollars from like yeah, but people we would rather pay like, twenty bucks to keep crypto around. <laughs> like I said, I found a way. Even if even if I hated crypto and never inter- or never interacted with him, the fact that it would make you not be sad would be worth it. Like, well, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm sure crypto appreciates it too. <laughs> crypto. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and yeah. chew at you while you play games. <laughs> That's fucked up, though. Poor girl. And hopefully you're probably going to win that lawsuit. You're definitely going to win that lawsuit. It's 2021. Uh, I don't know. I don't it's know. 2021. It's still it's technically... Trust. She might not have anything to stand on. What it's going to be, it's going to be a... It'll be a public service campaign where whatever group she's reached out to is going to, like, raise money for her, and that's going to go towards covering legal fees, and any extra will just be a donation to her. But then she'll get screwed if she has to pay taxes on it. Jesus, taxes. Oh. That's a different discussion, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> I miss being in the military. I didn't pay Illinois state tax. You made my taxes paid. I still pay taxes, though. That's a common misconception. <laughs> I pay my own my own uh, salary, I guess. So, don't worry. You pay a portion of it. <laughs> Most of it. And 99% like- it's still a portion. <laughs> <laughs> 1% is from Dennis. <laughs> you owe him. <laughs> I gave, hey, I gave four years of my life for you. My, my taxes right. paid your salary. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> that worked for you? <laughs> no, go mop my kitchen. <laughs> you owe me I get, four. I get you one me, of my troops on you it. Owe, you, you owe me four years of mopping. <laughs> four years of mopping, dude? Yeah, you start I did that my first two years. <laughs> That's so you should be good I at guess it. year and a half. I am good at it. Speaking sure. of mopping, speaking of, um, it reminds me, my friend Mitch, he uh, sent me a video. He's like, how to punish, how the punishment goes in uh, the Marines, because he was a Marine too. And it, the, he said, like, the sergeant said, go outside and mop, and it's pouring rain outside, and the guy's just mopping. And it's just I have pouring seen that rain. in real life. Mopping concrete. Mopping just mop concrete. That is the funniest <sighs> shit I've ever seen in my life. That's good. It is a life. Good times. 
Ooh, fucking raw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and another news topic that came up that really made me laugh was uh, Tiger King <laughs> ordered a limo because he thought President <laughs> Trump was going to pardon him. Oh. But President Trump pardoned Lil Wayne and Kodak Black. <laughs> That's very true. Kodak Black has had more chances at life than I know anyone else. Like, like I didn't even know. I, at first, I didn't know Little Wayne was in jail. <laughs> I don't think he was in jail. He was in jail. He, uh, I think he was being charged for like gun possession or some shit like that. It was one of those... It, I he, don't, again, I don't remember all the details because I read this and I went, this is the dumbest thing I've read today and it went right out my brain. <laughs> but it was... The Tiger King thing was funny. He really thought he was going to yeah, be a pardon and he, he hired he a little... God, that's so sad. And I guess it makes sense why Lil Wayne endorsed uh, right. Trump. Trump like, out of nowhere, last minute. So, makes sense. Well, yeah, it was one of those yeah. things where he was like, "Oh, Trump's pardoning people who endorse him. I'll throw some money at that campaign sure. and be like, I love you, Trump. I'll get a part. Sweet, <laughs> like good for him." But if, if I remember correctly, Lil Wayne, it wasn't even like a major. It was like some like fairly minor gun possession thing that like happens semi-regularly with people in the entertainment industry who happen to carry firearms like he brought it to the wrong place or didn't declare it or something and they were like we're going to come down hard on you and make an example blah 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 and he's like damn I got daddy Trump you feel me mm-hmm. Trump give me a pardon <laughs> I just want to know what Tiger King was thinking he wasn't <laughs> that or he's thinking I'm the king of tigers I didn't even watch that shit. No, I'm going to stay away from it. I don't care. I also have not Fuck watched Carol it. Baskin. You Fuck can't the Tiger King. avoid it on the internet. I've heard That's all about true. it. That's true. You cannot avoid memes. Memes are everywhere. <laughs> memes, memes are everywhere. Memes. You heard it here first, folks. Memes, memes are memes everywhere. Memes are everywhere. So that also brings me to my next topic. The Bernie... <laughs> the Bernie... The... <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Sanders Those are some good-ass memes. Bernie Sanders with the mittens on. That is some good shit. They, they have a they have an action figure they release of Bernie Sanders. No, 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 yes, oh, they they do. Do. Uh, in mittens. Yes. Already. Yes. Um, it's been two days. Yes, I guarantee. Look, I if I can get my phone right now, I will show you. I will post the link in the description. Actionfigures.com release an action figure. I'm looking this up. If they make a Funko here. Pop, I'll buy it. <laughs> Straight up. It ain't Funko, but it. <laughs> Is there? I'm gonna Google. Those memes are heat. My favorite Bernie one. Sanders mittens action figure. My favorite one so far is the uh, the Friday one. Where he's like, damn, yeah. when he's in the chair with his ice cube. <laughs> that shit is funny. My my favorite one is the when he's sitting in the chair like Fresh Prince. <laughs> yes, that was good too, man. You motherfuckers, you guys are smart, dude. <laughs> you that guys was, are funny as hell. That that was my favorite one. It was the fr- what was your good? While John Craig looks that up. Um, what, what website do you say this was on? Action figure out, actionfigures.com. Oh, I, oh, uh, there are so many memes of that. Here it is. Oh, no. Bam. Books a million. Computer sitting Bernie Bitten's bobblehead. Bam. 1999 from booksmillion.com. I don't know if you can see it right there. Bernie Sanders figure. Shout out to Bam, I guess, already making that figure. I think it's kind of dumb that they already made that figure, but hey. I'm make that money, you feel me? Money, 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 money. Books, books a million. Are you sure it's not just a Photoshop of like what an action figure would look like? No, there was a link in my Funko um, right. thing, and that's when I had sent it to everybody. Like, are you serious right now? Are you serious? I was like, I mean, it's not that serious. I mean, I do have a Harambe figure that I got in this week. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, I guess it's semi-serious, but like, I love Harambe though. That's funny as hell. Because you did not. What, was, what would you say your favorite um, Bernie meme is? My favorite Bernie meme? Uh, I did see one where they had just like photoshopped like the upper half of him onto Professor X. Oh, so he was like, sitting in a wheelchair. No like, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have not seen it. It was like cosplay too. Yeah. It was like, you know, a bunch of people cosplaying. Yeah. And it's like him sitting in like the wheelchair. <laughs> Have you seen the UFC one where it's the upper half and yeah, he's, he's, he's pulling some guy's arm? He's submitting him. <laughs> that one's funny. I gotta find this. That is hilarious. Books a Million. And I, I'm on Books a Million and Bernie Sanders and it just says... Some good shit, man. Give me Bernie Sanders books. <laughs> Records, audio, with nothing about an action figure. Alright, I'll find it later. You'll find it, you'll post it in the link and I'll go click on it. Now, are you gonna buy it? I'm... It depends on how much it is. 1999. 
I might send it to someone. I don't, I don't need it, but I might send it to someone and go, I got this for you. <laughs> I'm going to spend money on a joke, but I'm like, I don't want it. Like, I don't have space for a fucking Bernie Sanders action figure. Or not. <laughs> but I know people that, like, if I send it to them, they go, you got to keep it. <laughs> what is a tree topper for next year? Good call, Bernie yep. Sanders tree topper. Yep. <laughs> that would be funny. That would be hilarious. <laughs> one, of the, one of the funniest tweets about this Bernie Sanders thing was they want to put Bernie Sanders everywhere except the White House. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, poor Bernie Sanders, man. That sucks. Dude, that sucks. That's people a good People want to put him everywhere except the White House. House. That's a good one. I saw... That's good. Hot, hold on. I'm going to see if I can find the hottest take on this thing for you. That's hilarious. I fuck with Bernie Sanders, man. That guy's cool. Man. He's for the people, you know? That's why he's never gonna get elected. So I like I like he's not corrupt. But my, one of my favorite Bernie Sanders gifts is where he's boxing and the thing comes back at him and he's like, oh, I don't think I've seen that. I don't even know what you're talking about. He's like hitting the um the speed bag. I think it's the speed bag, right? And he's just like like just trying to show off and like hits him in the head. And he's like, he's oh, like real? Yeah. yeah. No. It's <laughs> a deep fake, bro. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that. There's some good ones. Uh, God, he used to, like, so... There's, like, old... He used to walk around when he was the mayor, like, and interview people. There's this ridiculous, like, interview footage of him, like, just interviewing regular people on the street and talking to them about politics. And he sees two, like... God, it's probably, like, 83 or 85, like, punk rock kids. Hell yeah. And they're like, yeah, this is... Why do you dress like that? Like, this is how we want to live, man. (laughs) It's really funny. Hell yeah. Oh, Oh, Bernie. God, I did the hottest take I saw on that was uh, I'd have to find it. I'll see if I can find it. We'll put the link in it. But it was on Twitter, where it was these two threads of people like accusing this of Bernie of being blatantly anti-feminist because he's sitting there posing for photos while women are talking as if to distract from them. And it's like, first of all, he didn't pose for this photo. Somebody just took it. Second of all, that photo was taken while. Biden was talking, so he's clearly just... And he's sitting in the cold. He's a grumpy old man who's known for being a grumpy old man sitting just done with having to be outside in the cold when he's got shit to do. He showed up in, like, a jacket that he clearly wears all the time. Right. He had, like, a file folder of work to work on while he was, like, reading shit. And was like, I guess I'll just sit here. He was, he was either on Jimmy Fallon or... Um... I want to say Jimmy Fallon, uh, one of the late shows, they, they said, do you know when you became a popular meme? And he's like, I was just trying to stay warm. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like that, man. So much people like you, man. Bernie does not give a fuck about memes. <clears throat> no, but Bernie I think- is one of those guys that, for better or worse, will say what's on his mind and also does not give a fuck. So he's, he's Trump. I, the people say he's the leftist version of Trump because... He's not an asshole. Like, he's not... He doesn't hate people and go, oh, I think you should be put in cages. He's like, why the fuck are there cages? Why are we not treating people with better respect? Like, <laughs> people need health care. He just yells and just goes off on whatever he wants to talk about and just, like, does it. So whilst I I'll like a lot of his policies, I don't think he would be a great president because he would just railroad everything <laughs> and not work with anybody to get anything done. <laughs> I don't know enough about politics to be like. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't like. He seems like a good dude, right? Um, the one thing like I know all my friends like Bernie about is uh, his, like he wants to get rid of, um, like the college, like college tuition and stuff, yeah. like the, the loans or whatever, like loan forgiveness and stuff. So I know a lot of people are all for that. Like I'm like I didn't go to college, but if that's the thing, I maybe I'll start to go. <laughs> I think you have had to already been going. They would, they would sure. forgive the loans and not say no more loans. <laughs> what? So it's they're forgiving. They were loans. Damn. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> forgiving, forgiving loans is so popular. That's the thing that like they think Biden and his administration might do, not just Bernie. Bernie, what he wanted to do was say college is free. Like everyone, like you can go to high school, you can go to college. It wouldn't necessarily, I can just go to Harvard. Like, it would still be right. private institutions right. that you would accept tuition, but everyone would have access to a college level education if they so desired. I don't, I don't disagree with that. I think that's Meaning, a good idea. Yeah, because in this day and age, like, high school doesn't prepare you for the world. You need something after that, like, be it like military or college or something to teach you 
that not everything is just handed to you, like all the time. Straight up. The um, well, I mean, I think now, especially in schools and stuff like that, like having a college degree is the new high school diploma. Yeah. Yep. Like yeah. back in the day, it was like, oh, you know, like I got my high school diploma it was good enough. Now it's like you only have your high school diploma. Like that's like that's it. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sad. Like I think that's sad that we look at it that way like trades or something that nobody really talked like they didn't talk about trades when I was in school but I mean it's definitely a long topic yes <laughs> want to get into that yeah that's a that's a much more in-depth <laughs> conversation um one of the other things to you know kind of go back to the whole uh you know White House and administration and everything is um I heard Joe Biden got rid of the Diet Coke button <sighs> I, I heard about too button you didn't hear about the Diet Coke button? I don't even know what you guys are talking about. Right? Okay, so these types of buttons have always existed in that the president at the desk could press a button. Like Roosevelt had four different things. You could summon it. It was like tea, coffee, a Coke, or like a lemonade. Or that something. is literally the most gangster shit yeah, I've would, ever heard like, in my entire it, fucking well, it's, life. It's the exact same <laughs> kind of thing where like you like buzz, you go like to the secretary like, uh, can I get four coffees? Only these were pre-programmed buttons, so in the middle of a meeting, you could just press the button and four new coffees would appear. That is super lit. Trump, being Trump, only drank Diet Coke. It was, the rumor was it was between 9 and 11 Diet Cokes a day. Jesus Christ. Like, I drink usually between one and two a day, and that's still too much. Yeah. And I'm like, that's more than I should be drinking, but, like, I don't drink coffees, so that's my caffeine. So I'm like... 11 a day? That's insane. Even 9 That's a wild. day. Yeah. Uh, that was Yeah. So he, had a, he pushed the button. He had a button. It was like this red button he would just press. And this is what made it so ridiculous. It was just a can of chilled Diet Coke that they would bring in on a silver platter. <laughs> now, admittedly, admittedly <laughs> it's the White House, so right. I'm sure pretty much everything is a silver platter right. because it's the White House. It's not like they have, like, plastic trays floating around there. They're going to be silver platters. Right. But imagine a can of Diet Coke. Like, you're in a meeting and just... And a minute later, a butler comes in with a can of Diet Coke for the president. And you're just like, that's a power move. That's exactly what that, that is. is. That's true. Yeah. That is some gangster shit. Uh-huh. I did not know presidents. So that, so that is removed. So what would, you, what would your button be? If I had a button? Uh... Shit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I can't be the president. <laughs> I, see, I, would probably, I would probably go Roosevelt's route and have like four different things like pre programmed. Because, yeah, look, you're talking to the guy that like went ahead and like rewired shit so I could press a button while at my desk and have the applause sign light up behind me. <laughs> <laughs> well, John Craig's got an applause button. Yeah, I have an applause sign that lights up and it has like a on off switch, but I rewired it so I have a button next to my mouse so when I'm on like a Zoom call, I can just. Can't I say something you? funny. And it says applause behind me. <laughs> like, like, turn it off. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, that's some funny. Shit. Yeah, um, but that's like good. I would have four buttons, and it would be. I think I'd want like a glass bottle, like Coke from Mexico, like <laughs> real sugar, like not corn syrup, <laughs> or something that like super unique, like cola champagne. Cola champagne. Oh, I love. Oh no! Cola. Yeah, see, so <laughs> if I was gonna do that, I would have one would just be like ice water. Be, like you just want water. You know. Usually I want to be drinking water. I don't want a bunch of fancy stuff. And then maybe like a tea button and a coffee button for like when other people are there and they want something else. And then maybe just to be like a real prick, I'd want, instead of a Coke button, I'd want an iron brew button. And you both are like, what the fuck's that? I don't know. What iron that is. brew is a Scottish soda that tastes like iron. It tastes like, it's, it's bright orange and it's, supposedly it is made with iron in it. And it tastes like rust. It does not. But it's because it's, it, it's like, well-known and acquainted with, like, Glasgow, which is, like, steel-working, like, iron ships and everything. So yeah. it's like, it's got, you got iron in your blood and steel in your blood, so iron brew. It's like Hardcore. This, yeah. And it's, <laughs> yeah, I-R-N-B-R-U. Bright orange can with blue letters. And it is Word up. orange color, like, carbonated beverage. Hey, you wouldn't you wanna have joke cola? Jolt? 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 Oh, no. 
<laughs> Joe Cola, all the caffeine, like twice the caffeine, twice the sugar. Like, Jeez. Like, yeah, no. Oh, like, I would, shit. like, oh, God, no. Uh-uh. I, I remember we used to drink that, like, when uh, me and John, I used to sleep over his house and just, like, over the weekends, like, we're in, like, seventh, eighth grade. And let's get some jolt and, like, just stay up all night <laughs> drinking Joe Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Eating no. chips and drinking Joe Cola. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, funny. Did so. I tell you I figured out why the last two weeks I've been like my sleep schedule's been totally screwed up? Is it, yeah, because you said you were getting ready for sketch fest. Yeah, my, so every year at this time it's usually the last weekend of sketch fest. So for two weeks I've been working from like one or two in the afternoon until I get home at like four in the morning, and then sleep from like four thirty until eleven. Get up eat breakfast, maybe do some laundry, then go to work to prep for, like, comedy festival. Either physically hanging lights and curtains or running rehearsals with groups and then doing shows and then after party until 4 a.m. So there's photos that pop up on Facebook every year, and it's like, last year it was just me with a can of Red Bull, and it was like, all right, first Red Bull of the festival, we're going to count how many I drink, and by the end it was like, by the end of the weekend, I was at 12. So it was like Thursday, I had two. And then Friday, I had three. And we were counting vodka Red Bulls, because that's what they were giving me after the show. You're... So I was drinking vodka Red Bulls, oh, yeah. and then up until four in the morning or five in the morning, because I'd be the last one out of the building. Like, right. hey, we're having an after party. We've got to close everything down. All right, the bar's closed. Everybody get the fuck out. i got to, like, turn off all the lights and go home. Hell yeah. And it's just a bunch of crazy performers that hang out until three or four in the morning getting drunk and then they'll go back to hotel rooms and keep after partying sometimes. Why not? Yeah, but that's when you're like, your body's like, you're supposed to be awake and partying right now. Why are you sitting at home playing Call of Duty? Or why, are you, like, <laughs> why are you in bed trying to sleep? It's 2 a.m. Wake up. And I'm like, it's 2 a.m. Why am I awake? I'm getting a text message from Leon. Boop. Okay, boop. <laughs> I'll respond. <laughs> Yes, I'm awake. No, I'm not staying up. I'm going to bed. Maybe, maybe you should switch to Joe Cola for another sketch fest. <laughs> <laughs> Crash well, hard as hell, man. <laughs> well, Red Bull used to uh, Red Bull used to sponsor the festival, so we have the letters Sketch Fest spelled out in like Red Bull cans. We save the <laughs> cans, and it's like Sketch is is sugar free, and then Fest is regular Red Bull, just giant on the wall. Oh, no. I don't know. I don't know. So, like my my mood changes every day, so I don't even know what button I would have I'd just be a button so like somebody can like just answer and be like I I feel like this like, sure I feel like a coke today <laughs> <laughs> well you'd have your own intercom button but like I feel like for the meetings you'd have oh you have pe- people who generally want either coffee or tea so you know and one of those buttons would be programmed where it's like hey it, you press that it's refill whatever we had so it's just a generic oh we had two coffees two teas, and a water. Bring in two more coffees, two more teas, and a water. Like that kind of thing. Just refresh whatever we have. One is just, I want a Red Bull, or I want a a glass bottle Coke, or whatever. One is the thing that you want, and then I think the water is the standard one. But, like, you just have that. Like, what you don't need a button. You have a button for the intercom, one for the refresh everything, and then one just to be a prick is, like, your glass bottle Coke. Like, or Jolt Cola. (laughs) Or Green River. <laughs> Green River. Oh, che- cheer wine. Oh, cheer wine. Yep, cheer wine is good. I like cheer wine. Oh, you know, you know what I probably would have Doctor uh, Thunder. IBC. <laughs> IBC. IBC root beer. Like no. in a nice in the nice glass and cold. No, no, no. I, IBC I want a root beer soda. float, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like a I'd like a McDonald's milkshake. Can you get one, please? Yeah, can you please give me that the uh, uh, J Balvin meal, please? <laughs> I'd like a I'd like a <laughs> <combo> <laughs> You think that's like Corey in the house? You ever seen Corey in the house? His dad becomes a chef for the president. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I would have that. Like, hey, let me get that J Balvin every day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, having a chef in your own... I don't know. Like, I don't know if there's... Like, make me this, and then you make it wrong. Like, you, you're fired. No, nah, you're fired. <laughs> but, but, like, I don't know. Like, to, imagine having, like, one chef to be good at, like, everything. It's not one chef that's good at everything. It's a master chef that is good at a lot of things and knows how to read correctly read instructions on how to make something. 
Like a master bartender doesn't have every drink memorized. No, but they have like the common drinks and then like maybe ten extras ready to go. And then you order something crazy, they go, "Cool, it's this," and they just build it. Like you really think a, a chef can make your your mom's rice? Definitely not. No, but like my exactly. mom's rice is not a thing. <laughs> you order a side of rice. If I'm president, I'm like Kinnicky on the floor. Well, there you go. I have her live there. <laughs> she wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'd like an order of Dennis's mom's rice. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Sir, this is a Wendy's. <laughs> Sir, this is a Wendy's. Oh, so I just, as you guys were talking, I was really thinking about this. That's my buttons, all right? Yeah. If I was president, I'd have to be single. Otherwise, I'm going to have... Who's that president that got in trouble for getting his dick sucked under the, the table? <laughs> Clinton. Yeah, he got impeached, whatever, right? So that can't be me. I had to be single. Anyways... Who just, was just the president like, who got in trouble for having his dick sucked? You know what? I'm thinking when he first thought, when he first said who was the president who got in trouble, I'm like, oh, Kennedy, he was a playboy. And yeah, but then I realized it's Josh. So this was probably we were alive and lived and read about this in the news how it happened. So let's go back 20 years, Clinton. <laughs> Anyways, I read have... about this in history class. I lived it, son. <laughs> I would have color coded buttons, right? And the this person, good. it would be five, like four or five of them, right? And the buttons, it, they would all, all, four out of the five would be the same thing, Vodka Red Bull, no matter what. Because if you're making decisions, you gotta be loose. You can't be all stuck up and up tight. You gotta be ready, you gotta be loose, you gotta be weighing the options, listening to everybody, you gotta be good, alright? So Vodka Red Bull for me, the fifth one would be water, just in case we get a little too loose, you feel me? So we bring us back. Wait, I, I, to clarify, you have five buttons. Correct. I'm just going to, button one is a vodka Red Bull. Two, three, and four are vodka Red Bull. I'm, I'm getting what, to what, what each button means right now. Got it. Okay. Watch. I was like, this is... Watch. Okay. All right. So, the first four are women. The last one is a man. All right? The first four color-coded buttons is going to be whatever lingerie she's wearing. And it's going to be a different female every time. Different race, but beautiful no matter what. <laughs> Right? Straight up. I'm not playing. <laughs> if I was the president, I would be doing this. But I had to be single, so it was not controversial. You feel me? Anyway, so it's just, like she would come in with a silver platter and my vodka Red Bull, just looking all beautiful. What's good, ma? Thank you. Get back to, you know, nuking people. Okay. Whatever. Right. The fifth one, a man, to not be sexist, He's wearing a bow tie and the shorts with no shirt. Mm -hmm. All right. Wait. <laughs> he's just bringing me to water. Hey, bro. So she. So each, same dude. This be my homie. One, one <clears> through <throat> four is a woman dressed in just lingerie. Correct. And a, a red bull. Maybe bowl. like maybe like uh, what is it, like the fifties like showgirls where they had like the big poofy. Sure, like, like, like that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I was on and fishnets yeah. or something. Big bag. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Just wanted to clarify. That's what we're going with. And each and the button is the so button one is like red lingerie. Red, button two purple, is blue. Specifically red, purple, blue, and then black. Okay. Just like that. That right. order, specifically. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, oh. my president is black and my Lambo is blue type yeah. shit, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? So, I mean. But not to be sexist, the fifth one would be a guy yeah, wearing. Yeah, Chippendale's outfit. Yeah, Chippendale's outfit. Chippendale's outfit. outfit. The, the, the tiny speed. And he's like a little collar. He's, 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 he's got the cuff. I like the, like the yeah, cuff. Yeah, the cuff. But, like, no, but no shirt. Just a swole, just like cut Straight dude. Up. He's my trainer. No, right, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, He's I'm my wanna, trainer. I want, a, I want a Chris Farley. Oh, well, that's on Saturdays. <laughs> Chris Farley. Monday through Friday. Friday. <laughs> Monday through Friday is, is the personal trainer guy. Saturday is his day off. Sunday is the day of rest, so it's a priest. Word up. Yeah. I'm just saying. But it's a priest who still is just wearing the priest collar. <laughs> the Speedos. I'm the president. <laughs> They're going to tell him, no. <laughs> Come oh. on, son. I can I can blow people up, but I can't have a girl in lingerie bring me a vodka rebel. What kind of shit is that? That don't even make sense. That don't even like that don't correlate whatsoever. The the greater good is at stake here. I'm, I'm telling you. Oh, I love the, I love the thought process behind this. Man, you got access to nukes. You got to be loose. Get vodka Red Bulls up I'm in here. Like, all right. <laughs> all right. Oh, well, you know what's really funny? Um, I was reading that I I I know I shouldn't be like. Like, but to me, it's funny. I can't even sure. Think. Um, Barack Obama loves the boys. The show. The yeah. show. Like, <laughs> he's the president. He's watching Homelander drunk her off across the city. 
<laughs> yeah. Like, that's just funny to me. Yeah, because they're like political figures. Yeah, so like, like no. things that are crude. And, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. He's like, oh man, that Homelander. <laughs> 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 and it is the same deal. Like, there's pictures of him like smoking weed in college, you know? Like, he, I just, he's I, the first black president. He can do whatever he wants, basically. Obama, is, I, I was thinking about this. Obama was the first, is the only president in my lifetime that I can recall that was not a boomer. Yeah. Everybody else, like, Obama's the youngest president we've had. Everybody else is, like, way older. That's kind of fucked up. Yeah. Well, I think, what, you gotta be 45 to be a president or something like that? There, There is an age. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's 44. It's 44 or 45, but yes, you're correct. And then, um... Yeah, but it's, the thing is, it, generally, in order to become president, you have to have, again, generally, because clearly we, for four years, had a fucking reality TV show. Uh... <laughs> you have to have some experience. So even if you become like, you enter politics when you're like 22, after you serve 20 years, like 20, 25 years, you're about, you've worked your way up to becoming like that level where enough people know you and you have enough like, oh, this is how they're likely to vote. You have like a record as to, people can look and go, oh, I like their record, uh, their voting record. You can look at it and go, oh, they, they I agree with most of the things they've done particularly in the last five or ten years. And that's how you... That's what you would get votes from. Uh, It's just... Because the life expectancy has increased dramatically and the boomers have pulled the social ladder up after them that we no longer have boomers retiring. Everyone is staying in their jobs until they die. So Gen X and millennials don't have anywhere to go up further and further up. They just get stuck at this level until an opening somebody dies they can move up so we just keep getting like these people going oh I'm still active and working I'm voting for things that are going to help me in the next three years because I'm 75 and I'm not likely to live to 100 so I don't care about things that are 20 years in the future makes sense and that's when we get Mitch McConnell yeah (laughs) but yeah I, I just thought it was funny that Barack Obama like watches the boys I mean like it's cool like you know he's an ordinary guy like it's a good show I wouldn't say like it's a bad show no I mean the the boys is an entertaining enough show and it's it is it is funny that Obama likes the boys (laughs) like it is pretty funny like that is it's pretty good Thank you, sir. Oh, man, see, you pressed the button and somebody brought yeah, you sure. Beer. Hey, one day we're going to have a girl in lingerie coming up in here bringing us drinks. Good to go. <laughs> I won't get my button. One day. The other thing, too, I heard, like, Obama... Um, I know people. How much you want to pay to have this person bring you drinks <laughs> per episode? I will do this. <laughs> I mean, like, this is insane. We'll talk wait, off camera. Wait, wait, wait till we get his, his stimulus check. <laughs> <laughs> I need that 1400 buddy. Come on. <laughs> But the other thing I heard um, Obama did was like he would like regularly play, like, play basketball like yeah. against like his cabinet members and stuff like, like, like hey, we're going to hoop yeah. right now. You guys want to play some ball? Yeah. I mean, don't see why not. Dunking on him and shit. Could you imagine? I'm waiting for the day when we have a president who's like in his like 50s and is like challenging his uh, his cabinet members to like rounds of Magic the Gathering or like Call of Duty or something because that's what they grew up playing. Hey, let's go play Tetris. Let's go play Mario Kart. And they just pull out a TV and they're playing Mario Kart on like an old Super Nintendo. Yeah, can you imagine like the day like when your president is like, hey man, like I'm online right now. Well, we're almost at that stage. Yeah, because what's her name? AOC. Or, I don't. I don't know her own name. I just know yeah. her by AOC. She played uh, Among Us like live streamed a bunch of Twitch streamers or whatever. Yep. So yeah. So like, I guess we're getting there. Mm-hmm. I I still think it would be. I, I I know what happens. Like don't get, like I know there are a lot of famous people who play video games and stuff like that. But man, you imagine like the time that you like kill somebody in Call of Duty and it's like <laughs> somebody voice. Oh, it's like, a like somebody you recognize. Like oh, you damn it, you fucking killed me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like the president. Like it's a voice that you recognize. Like, yeah, maybe not even the president. Just somebody famous in general. Like, well, if you were playing Call of Duty and then say. I guess what's a voice that you would easily recognize in the three second that they might be saying something? <laughs> like Arnold Schwarzenegger is like, oh, fuck you, like whatever. <laughs> you wouldn't go, oh, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger, that's somebody doing an Arnold impression. True. Like, you'd have to be paying strict attention to what the name is 
and know that the name is, oh, that's really Arnold Schwarzenegger. Or like The Rock. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I heard like Jay from, you know, Jay Silent Bob, like as an average video gamer, he plays Among Us like all the time too. Yeah. So. We're at that stage where you could randomly end up in a, in a gaming lobby with famous people, yeah. But <clears throat> It might be easier, We always, cause the fact that we play Call of Duty, we play Warzone, so it's different where like, where like if you actually purchase the game where you're playing like a uh, team deathmatch or whatever, sure. where you have the whole team where people are constantly talking. Oh well, yeah, you would, but and because you're thrown in a random lobby. Well, so in even in Warzone, you can have. Well, yeah, if you, you could do like party. quads, and you just go fill party, and you're a random player. You could get random people, but nobody wants to play like that. I don't play these games to play the game. I play the game so I can play with my friends. Yeah, hundred percent. Otherwise, I would wouldn't be playing Call of Duty at all right now. Actually, to be honest. With you. Yeah, but you play team deathmatch with random people and your friends, right? No, I I don't. Play team deathmatch anymore at all? Actually, so like, I if I get on COD, it's like a hassle for my homies to get me on COD because I I don't like playing it anymore. But they get me on. It's we're playing, we're strictly playing. We get like a full party, and if we don't, we still just run search and destroy, or like cyber attack. So we're doing just objective based game yeah. modes, and then if there's only four, three or four of us, then we'll run run wars. But we have like a set of six people that we just get on and we just play the game. Yeah. So I'm literally just playing just because I'm with my homies. Like right now, I run like. A seven two five sawed off slug round. <laughs> it is the most heinous, stupid shit you could ever have ever. But it's just funny. Like, I don't play to play. I play just to fuck around. It's like when I play like throwing knives and stuff. And like, yeah, I could run like assault rifles, but like, it's funnier to me mm-hmm. to run in with like dual pistols and then like throwing knives. And like, I'll die nine times out of ten. But that one time, I surprise a guy and kill him, yeah. and then to hit him with the knife and he gets electrocuted or like it drills into him and he goes oh what the fuck and you're like ha, 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 ha. you got killed by some sh- shitty player idiot and you like run off like, you got killed by me and I'm terrible <laughs> yeah I don't think I don't even use regular guns at all anymore I either use that 725 setup uh, a pistol or I use my 10 rounds uh, M4 it's got literally got 10 rounds in it and I just use that to fuck around the thing I refuse to play is the shield because I hate those people I, like, yeah I don't use it either shield I'll play, like, not I'll play like the swords and the knives because like you can shoot me as I run up yeah. like, if I get to you stab and you're dead like one hit that's fun gas grenades or stun grenades gas grenades are better you pull a Batman <laughs> gas grenade drop down stab him he's <laughs> dead and you go Batman <laughs> uh, I still rock I still rock my <clears throat> hundred round kilo <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> did, did, did he tell you I showed him how to make the kilo into a semi sniper rifle? No. You can put what? A, you can put a sniper you can put a sniper scope scope on, on it. it. Yeah. So he has the the kilo with hundred rounds because it's Dennis, and you can switch the kilo to semi automatic, and you get the sniper scope, and he just sit at the edge and click, and he went tink 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 tink, tink. and people are suddenly like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, how did you get sniped by it? Like this quickly? Right right yeah. That's <laughs> they get so shit. mad. That is some funny shit. Yeah. I used to run uh, the Bruin, which is like a newer LMG, mm-hmm. with a with a, a sniper scope on it, just for fun. I was like, dude, fuck it. And I was just slaying bodies with it. Like, that was fucking dope. <laughs> Sniping someone with this that is not a sniper rifle is very funny to me. <laughs> it's hilarious. I still, I still use my thermal that Leon hates. I love, Jesus. I, I love the thermal. Is that the thermal with like the purple tip? The, the Predator thermal? Yeah, okay. I, cool. I hate the white one. There's also one that's like a green one. Right, black, black, but it's the green. Hot. It's the green one. Oh, there's another one that's like a purple with like everything else. Sh- the heat shows up as red and yellow. Well, this is green and it shows up as red and. That's why you have the no- green one. Yeah, there's another one that's purple. Yeah, like I use the green one. Yeah, to me, because oh, like, that's right. There's only green in that one, right? Like I, 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 I feel like I can, there's, I can there see, I can see somebody further away. Yeah. With with if obviously they don't have cold blood at all. Sure, but. I mean I get it. That's fine. Leon builds his sniper rifle different than the way I build my sniper rifle. Well, I don't use this. I don't use this. Yeah, and like we've for traded sniper. it. Like I've picked up his sniper rifle. I'm like I can't fucking use this. Like because he builds his for like quick scoping, where he pops up and then drops. Whereas I line up my shots and like I'll take a couple hits and then just headshot him. He just pops up and pogos. Yeah. Totally different play style. Same result. Hey. I've only ever seen white hot and black hot in the military. I've never seen like in the movies where it's like the blue and the 
You got like the orange and the red and the yellow and shit. Oh, yeah, I feel like that's that's just done. I mean, there might they might there exist, definitely is, but but it's like they're not not at my level. That, <laughs> yeah, I don't know how common that is. Imagine it's like maybe like super. More expensive. Mm-hmm. I, don't know what the f- I used the scope for the first time Very. last Saturday. <laughs> oh, that sight! Oh uh, yeah, buddy's rifle. Yeah, and it, the, I mean the the red dot was way off. <laughs> it was good at first. It just wasn't tying down, so that your his zero was going everywhere. That's why, I, like, when it was off, it was good because uh, I found out that the zero was basically at the tip of the fucking the trident. At the oh end. Geez. I don't know what to call it, but yeah, the front sight. Yeah, we yeah. shot an AR fifteen. It was nice. Or whatever. Yeah, it was nice. I mean. It, I expected a way bigger kick. No nah, man, that fuck it's just big. And then you have the the buffer spring there, all onto your shoulder. You just straight control, just draw bodies with that. Good shit. I was scared to put my head on it. Just like put put your head on it. It's fine. Shit, I'm, I'm, cheap, I'm, bro. You got a, nice, a nice bruise right here. Damn it! I was hoping you had a bruise. Nah. <laughs> ah, there's a weak spot. But it did stink though. It stunk. Your bruise? I think like, it's just no the carbon. It's, uh, oh, I no, think it kind of the, gun, the gunpowder. Yeah, yeah, I just think it's just build or whatever. Whatever that rifle is, because it was smoking more than I've ever seen a rifle smoke. Because well, yeah, mean, Jess cleaned it too. I think too. I don't. I don't, I don't know. That, I don't know if that matters. I don't know really. anything about. I mean, you can smell the CLP. That's what he used, but like, you smell carbon more than anything. I don't know. It looked like it was almost like burning on the inside. Weird. Because it was like literally smoking, smoking. Like I know my rifle doesn't do that. Or the, the rifle I shot last. I mean, it smoked a little bit, but not as much as his was smoking. What's your next topic? Next, <laughs> next news topic. Um, a couple things. Kingsman got pushed out to um, August twenty twenty one. There is a new Kingsman movie coming out. It's a prequel. Uh, Kingsman movie coming. Is out. there two? And this is the third one, but it's a prequel. Yes. Right. Okay. This is the third one, and it's a prequel. I don't know how I feel about that. I like the first two Kingsman movies. I haven't seen them. They're really good. They're good. I mean, I heard the Millar, church scene. Millar the really movie. wrote them for, or Miller. It's Millar, not Millar. Mark Millar. That's Miller. That's no, Mark Millar. Yeah, he says it's Miller. But Mark himself says it's Miller. I know, but I'm calling him Mark Millar. <laughs> for the purpose of this podcast, he's Mark Millar. He said, fuck you, Mark Miller. <laughs> yeah, it's Mark. You're Millar It is now. Mark Miller, but Mark Millar. So we know who we're talking about. <laughs> the dude who wrote... Uh, Wanted. <laughs> Wanted. We're we talking about that today. In uh, Civil War. And... Uh, <laughs> Forgot he wrote Civil War. Yeah, and that was one of those ones that was like great concept, mediocre execution. Anyway, go ahead. So he, he writes he writes comics just for movies. Yeah, like and he's he said that too. Like, yeah. Um. So yeah. So it's his comic. He's coming out with three, which is going to be a prequel. I like the first two. The first two were great. The second one was actually kind of really fun for a second one. Interesting. First um. One. Did you see? You, did you see the second one or no? Yes. I like the first one better. Chad, I think. Chad and Tatum's barely in it. I don't. Is this one set in like the late or like the early nineties or something? No, this no, is no. Like it's World War Two or World War. Oh, okay, I. so maybe yeah, World War Two. But nobody really. Only person people do World War One was Wonder Woman. Yeah. This this prequel. Yeah, set prequels, in World War II? yeah. Really. Hmm. Interesting. Well. It's basically how the Kingsman started. It's like the origin. I was going to say, like, I remember, now that you mentioned I do remember seeing some commercial for it. It looked old-timey, but I don't remember anything other than going, well, it's clearly pre-1950s. Yeah, I have not seen anything. Yeah, I saw the trailer for it, um, you know, obviously due to COVID, it's getting pushed back, um, which also brings me to another topic, because, I mean, there's really not much to talk about Kingsman, because we don't know too much about it. Uh, Nolan and HBO Max have a falling out. Basically, Nolan wants all his movies pulled. I'd agree. So they are breaking up because of everything. I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. I agree only because. So like, I like people on Twitter are like, oh, Nolan just crying because he wants his fucking money from the theater. Like this is not like I understand that part. So like, yeah, if you're crying because of that, then you can kind of just go fuck yourself. You already have a bunch of fucking money. I don't give a fuck. It's not about but, that. Me, personally, I agree with him only because watching movies in the movie theater is an entire different experience than watching it at home. You literally cannot recreate an IMAX 3D film in your home. Like, you do not, you don't have the technology. Unless you have IMAX 3D in your home with soundproof everything, like, you have a home theater with IMAX 3D, like, you cannot recreate the experience. There is a different experience in watching a movie at the movie theater than it is at your home. So from that aspect, from him as a cinematographer, 
I can understand. Like I wouldn't. I don't want to watch a Nolan movie for the first time on HBO Max. I want to go to the theater and I want to watch it in IMAX. So that's just me. So I can understand that, but I, I this is the first time hearing about this. So it's his argument. Uh, I shoot movies to be seen in a particular format, and you're not showing them that way. So I want you to stop showing them. So I don't know what the official argument is. I know, um, so this is what I've heard and what I've read, is um, when Wonder Woman got put on HBO Max, um, WB went to Patty Jenkins yeah. and Gail Gadot and said, like, here's X amount of money. I, they, they said to them, uh, I, I want to say $10 million, but $10 million seems like a lot um, each. Because I, like, I guess pretty much they get money from... They get a percentage of ticket sales. T- t- ticket sales. Sure. So b- this is their way of kind of like appeasing them. Hey, right. there are no ticket sales because there's a pandemic. Right. So here's this money. But then HBO Max re- decided that Kong is going to be released on HBO Max. Uh, King Kong, or Godzilla versus King Kong. Um, Dune. Tom and Jerry. Um, and there's a bunch, they, they released a bunch of WB. Sure. Um, HBO Max released a bunch of Movies that are going to go straight to HBO Max because of the pandemic. Um, and all these filmmakers are upset because now they're not going to make their cut. Nolan was one of them. He's like, I woke, I went to sleep working for a like giant movie company. Uh, woke up to a streaming service. This was like some, something like that. But that was pretty much his quote. He tweeted out. So, so he sounds upset. like a rich entitled prick because... Unless Warner Brothers is saying we are never going to go back to movie theaters, we are only do we are only going to show streaming from now until the end of time. It's like, dude, there's a fucking pandemic. Sure, that's like, like the argument on Twitter, like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Like, yeah, like I can understand that you're irritated that right. you thought you'd be getting X amount of money, but how about they just they hold off on your movie until movie theaters come back, and then you're losing out on money because by that point, either maybe we never go back to that point. Uh, maybe the human, humanity dies out because we can't get a control of this thing. Like, just there's so many ifs. Like, just f- who cares? It's fucking money. Well, you're also you're Christopher Nolan. How hard up are you for money? Right. Not only that, like the way I see it is, he's upset, but we released Tenet in the theaters, and he even said that Tenet was the movie to drive people back to theaters. And guess what? It failed. Oh, this is the stupid time travel thing. Yes. So that movie failed. Like we tried it your way, it didn't work. Yeah. Like not only that, if if HBO wanted to be a prick, like you know what, fine. You want ticket sales? We'll release them during the pandemic. Now you don't get shit. Right? Yeah. Like. Great. Do fine. Do the ticket sales version. Release them. To whatever the run was, and when he only gets two million instead of ten million or whatever they promised him, he can. Fuck off. Yeah. Like, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Like, there's, again, a pandemic. <laughs> now, I, I truly feel that the movie industry is currently going through what the music industry when Napster hit. Times are changing. Like, unfortunately, this is the nature of the beast that we're living in right now. Everyone is streaming, especially now with the pandemic, probably made people stream even more. But this oh, is God, the yeah. way the future is. It's I, streaming. I understand, like... If he's a... Your, your standpoint, like, movies aren't meant to be this way and you can't recreate it. But guess what? They have it on DVD, Didn't, if not in the movie theaters. This argument sounds a lot like what Lucas? people... Well, no, well, I mean, yes, but also what people said, my plays were not meant to be put on film. They're meant to be live productions. Like, yeah, guess what? Technology changed. People want to see film instead of plays. Oh, people want to see a movie that has sound, not just a, a talkie. Like, guess what? The fucking technology is modified. Yeah, but... So, from what you're saying for there, is like, that's an upgrade. You watching a film in your home versus a theater is not an upgrade. That it is, is for a literal me. downgrade. It is, it's it's convenient, more convenient for you, yes. but it is not an upgrade in the sense of what you're watching. You, It is a literal downgrade because you do not have the technology in your home. Do you know what the appeal... Do you know it? the only movies I see in theaters are the ones where we go as a group that's almost, fine. And they're almost Marvel movies, and we go to see them at midnight because it's an event. If it's not an event, 
I don't give a shit. The only that movie doesn't matter. I, the only the fact of the the fact that it, it is a literal down it's a literal downgrade. It is a technological downgrade. Correct. But this is, we live in a capitalist society where. The consumer says, I would rather watch a lower quality movie at home than than see and go outside in public and watch a better quality movie. Well, that's fucking bullshit. That's for you. I'm just saying. For you. <laughs> and if you want to pay money, if you want to pay $20 a ticket to go watch Christopher Nolan's latest movie in a theater, you should be able to. That is fine. I, I do not give a fuck about Christopher Nolan and his fucking movies. <laughs> I don't go, oh, Christopher Nolan made a movie. I better go see it. I go, what's the movie about? I might care. I don't care who made it. Right. So like, the only movie that I've ever felt even remotely obligated to see in theaters was Doctor Strange. Because that one had crazy, trippy 3D effects that like I paid for the 3D IMAX and watched it. And then I watched it at home on, on Netflix or on same. DVD. Right. Right? Yeah, it's different, but like I don't lose anything from the story. I just lose some crazy special effects. The special effects, to me, did not affect the story whatsoever. If you I mean, have to rely on special yeah. effects to make a story, then you're not telling no, a story. No, because that's, there is a way which special effects could specifically affect the story. Like, if there's special effects are only available that allows you to, like, do, like, the sound, sound... Like, the difference between, we were just talking about this, Call of Duty, when you're, watch, when you're playing it on a TV screen or when you're playing it with good quality headphones. Earlier today we were playing, and I was like, guys, can you shut up for a minute? There's somebody walking. I could tell where they were walking because I had my good headphones on, and he came up and I shot him. Whereas, if you're just running around, you go, oh, there's footsteps, I don't know where the hell he is. I knew he was one floor below me coming up the flight of stairs, because I could hear, like, the levels change, and when I turned, where he was in relation to where I was. So, like, there is a way that you could do that with surround sound and all that kind of stuff. And you could make a movie that has, like, some sort of scent that it comes out at a certain time. They've done stuff like this with, like, scent or, like, a mist and light changes, and all sorts of stuff. They've yeah, done live stage productions. There's, there's 4D theaters. Yeah, there's all sorts of things which you can do, but most people don't give a fuck about that. They want the convenience of, I want to tell, I want somebody to tell me a story. Like, if you ask Nick, would he rather <laughs> go to the theater and deal with a bunch of bullshit, or just stay at home and watch this movie? He's probably going to say, I'm going to stay at home and watch this oh, movie. Man. I think majority of people would stay, especially now. I mean, during the pandemic, sure, but I mean... I mean, if you could rather, sh I would rather stream something than get up and watch a movie. And again, I, how many times do I go to the movies if it's an event where we all get to go? Like, I'm down to even see like a shitty movie. Like, as long as we all get to go, because it's more like all of us going and mm -hmm. talking about it afterwards, versus like I have to see this movie in the theater. Like, I don't. Yeah. There isn't a movie that I need to see in the theater. Like. There, there isn't. Like, there is movies that you actually do need to see in the theater. Like my e Interstellar, you are not going to recreate that experience, well, especially from the sound alone. Inter Interstellar, fair, Interstellar but... is been done. Like it came and left from the theater. I haven't seen it yet. I saw it at the tattoo shop. So scratch that. I saw at the tattoo shop. So did I really watch it? No, not really. Right. But again, am I? If I watch it at home, am I still going to be like this movie's? Not good anymore, but had I watched it in the theater, say, like, I like this movie. No. Josh, like, I have a question for you. You've seen Interstellar in the theater, or like IMAX, all that stuff? Correct. And have you watched it at home? Of course. Okay. What of the story changed? Nothing, but that's not my point. You're losing, you're losing I things I from agree the cinematic experience. I agree with your point that... I just don't think that changed. it should completely go away. That's my like. I don't agree with Nolan. I don't think it should go away either. That's not my Oh, argument. my movies have my to be... My argument is that Nolan's a prick. That's fine. I'm not. I'm not yeah, disagreeing right. with that. We're, 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 we're arguing that. two different points. No one is disagreeing on that. No, no we also agree that, that if it's about the money, then you can go fuck yourself. Yeah. But if it's about the sole fact that uh, theaters could be like no more altogether, then I am agreeing with it. I think. Fuck that. I think movie theaters are going to change. I don't think that should be the case because I, you are I mean, literally taking away it, from an entire experience. It, it may not be the case, but the the nature of the beast. Ah, well, fuck the beast. beast. I'm gonna like, slam because okay, this is bullshit. My, my <laughs> the, the same people said the same thing about vinyl. Vinyl sounds so much better than digital so, or a CD or a cassette. And then now everybody like streams it. Like we don't. Like don't download anything. The whole this is the whole Napster argument all over again. That's not the same though because the you how is it the not the quality same? is oh, this is this. better on on streaming right than on a on a fucking record. What are you talking no, about? No, it's not. 
What are you talking about? It depends on, there's so many factors involved. The quality for streaming audio versus having a record. Nine times out of ten, the record, if it is a good quality new, not like shitty scratched up record, the record is going to sound better than the stream. I, I have a record player at home with a fuck ton of records. Yes, and I don't know the quality of your record player, but the quality of your record player is probably the quality of like someone's VCR or DVD or Laserdisc at home compared to... An All right, iMac. that's okay. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, that's Whatever. what I'm saying. Like, look it up anywhere. That, and people I, say but it. I have a record player. I buy a record player because I like the sound. Sure. So it's the same argument here with the theater. Why? Even though it's more convenient. I bought a I bought a for me Blu-ray to, player because I like to watch the movie at home. You're not getting the experience. But that experience your, isn't the, there. But the experience for me is somebody tells me a story and then I get to enjoy the story. For me, the experience isn't. I get to go sit in a sticky theater with a bunch of talking people that talk over the information that I'm trying to read or <clears> listen to or whatever because every time I go to the movie, I'm telling people to shut up because someone is trying to tell me a joke or I got to smite. Hey, that guy said the thing. What was he saying while I was talking? Uh, uh, what's that a reference to? Why is that guy wearing blue? Doesn't he normally wear red? Like, I don't know anymore because I've lost track of the story. It seems like you've had bad ex- movie theater experiences. Yeah, um, and when I go to the I don't because I go by myself. I don't like going to the people because of that exact reason. Sure. You, I do. I'm just telling you that there is a theater experience that you cannot recreate at home unless you have a home theater. Yes, and I'm agreeing and with you. And here, that is part of a film. Whether you want to be like it's not part of the story or not, it doesn't matter. It's part of the film. Okay, so, so like, would you agree in the same vein when it comes to just music? That it is better to have a live orchestra play that music or well, live band. No play shit. For that's you why at home. we still go to concerts. That's no, why no, people no. to play still... it in your home rather than just listen to the CD or stream it. Would I rather have a live orchestra in my home, or would you rather stream the music? I would love to have a live orchestra in my home. Like I would love to have a home theater, but I don't have the money. Right. So because I would the go to the movie theater. Stuff is way more expensive. That's the, that's the entry point. The point of entry is so much higher for all of that audio equipment. That's why. A record and streaming, streaming sounds slightly worse. Slightly. But the convenience factor of being able to go, hey, it's on my phone, go. As opposed to, hold on, let's go to my apartment and I'll play a record for you. Unless you're trying to get that person in bed, there's no reason to do that. You just go, here, I'll send you the link and you can listen to the song on your own time. Not only that, when you listen to a record vinyl and you're putting on a record and you want to listen to another song that's not on that vinyl... You don't have the op- you have to get up, sure. change the record. I mean, you had the convenience. You factor. can't just like make a playlist. The closest right. we had to that was when we were in like high school. And it was like uh, audio cassettes. Right. No, but, uh, but, but I'm saying like the the whole vinyl thing. Vinyl sounds so, ten times better than streaming. That same argument about movies being better in the theater is the same. It's the same music argument. The, the vinyl sounds better depending on what equipment you're listening to. The movie looks and sounds better depending on what equipment you're viewing it on. Right, because my bet you my so if my I were to go sixty five inch TV looks way better than a two dollar right. theater, you're, but it looks worse than the fucking IMAX 3D because it was right. literally specifically made for that. Yes, if a movie is specifically made for that, why would you subtract that from the entire equation? That doesn't make so sense. Are you're, you you're literally taking away from okay so the experience that was made for that? So by the same argument. You should never own a DVD. Bach should only be listened to live because they didn't, or on a wax cylinder because they didn't have streaming services. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I. I would rather listen it to watch it or listen to it on the the preferred way for the first time. Sure, and that's what. So the first time you hear music should be on whatever technology was available at the time. That's the way the person recorded it. You are comparing Apple Store. You're reaching right now, sir. That is a reach. I'm asking if that's what you're saying because no, you, you I'm just, it seems like you're very insistent that whatever technology was available when they recorded this movie or no, the audio is what we should listen to. No, right? not at all. You're still you're downgrading though. You're not like that's that's not better quality, right? Okay, so I should. You're you're still down. So your home best. Your home is a downgrade. Best available, not when they recorded. Best available now. Correct. Okay. Whatever's the best experience, you should. Be at that point. The best experience is in the theater because it's tailored for that. Unless it's tailored for your home, I was like, but it might. Then not I'll be watch tailored. it at home. There you go. It might not be tailored for the theater. So when I'm talking about like Interstellar or specifically Nolan, because he specifically makes his movies for IMAX 3D yeah. or just IMAX in sure. general and tailors for that experience, 
I want to watch that in IMAX because okay. there is an experience that you will be missing out on. No one is saying not. you can't. I'm just saying that if his argument is the fact that streaming might replace the movie theater altogether, I agree with that. Like, fuck that. Okay. That's not... No, if, with if, that. But even if streaming replaces movie theaters and movie theaters go away, there is nothing stopping you from watching movies in IMAX because that technology hasn't ceased to exist. You can build a home theater that replicates that. All right. Um, I had to change out the memory card on the sound. Here. Um, but we are good to go. JC's monitoring things as we go along, talking about Chris, Christopher Nolan and his rant and movies and things like that. Um, but to go on to the next news topic, uh, final news topic of the day, rumor has it Spider-Man 3 has a title. What is this rumored title? Home Alone. It's supposed to be a Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um, all right, all right. Just kind of paying homage to the Home Alone movie franchise. Also, you know, just from what I understand, it's going to be a Christmas movie. Based on that title, again, this is speculations, rumors, things that we know so far. Um, I know Josh said that he definitely did not want all these Spider-Man to be in a movie with Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire. I say I'm okay with it. I actually don't mind. If it's a... Uh... 30 second cameo but if it's like big part of the movie fuck no I don't, like, I, we're not getting this Spider-Man to be him, be by himself I, yeah I don't think we're at the stage of a live action into the Spider-Verse and it's not even that's not even into the Spider-Verse in my opinion because you just have the same Peter Parker basically in my opinion like well, bring if you're gonna do a Spider-Verse bring the different Spider-Man like specifically like Spider-Man Noir or like the way Shattered Dimensions was like bring those Spider-Man in don't right. bring the same Peter Parker. They're, they're, they're the not. same Peter Parker, technically. I mean, one's got organic webbing and one rides a skateboard. There's two different spider man One's emo Spider-Man. Right, Sorry. there you go. <laughs> I don't want emo Spider-Man. That's stupid. I cool mean, emo Spider-Man, I'm good. I love Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible casting. I don't care what anybody says. Terrible. You love Amazing Spider-Man 2, and I, just, and I love Spider-Man 2. But you haven't even seen Amazing Spider-Man 2, though. I'm saying you love Amazing yes. Spider-Man 2, and I love Spider-Man 2. I, once you watch Amazing Spider-Man 2, then you will enjoy Amazing Spider-Man 2, and you might even like it better than I, that I, shitty ass. <laughs> I have, I have, I'm sad, so my powers are gone. Hey, I emotions this, do block things, man. Just Alfred saying. Molina is Doc Ock. <laughs> Joel McHale getting whacked by Aunt May when he tries to steal a gold coin off the floor. <laughs> Is that Joe McHale? From Community? Yeah. He's a guy that was like denies them a toaster. No, that's not Joe McHale. That was, um... Isn't it? Um, Evil Dead. Bruce Campbell. No. Bruce Campbell plays the Who's door guy the, the door guy at the theater. Oh, and the second one, yep. Yep. Now I gotta kind of watch that. Now you gotta again. go watch that again. Mm. That's right. Mm. Mm. That's shitty ass, by the way. No, no, <laughs> no. I it's a good to Spider-Man. Say that. It's a good Spider-Man. Yeah, it is. I can understand if you don't like particular things about it, but it's a pretty good Spider-Man. Yeah, maybe I just don't like Raimi. That's fine. You're allowed to be wrong about something. True, you are allowed to be wrong about a lot of things. <laughs> All right, specifically time being relative. But <laughs> we're good. I just I can hear everybody. It sounds like weird echo, and I hear two things, so we're good. I'm watching a little screen. We got the monitors. We're good. My, my voice is going up and down, up and down. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, I mean, I don't know, Spider-Man 3, Home Alone, if it's actually going to be a good thing or not. I mean, I'm not, again, the faith in the whole Marvel thing, and they haven't done me wrong so far, and I like what they've done. Is it actually Home Alone? Like they, I That's the rumor that it's going to be called Home you Alone. You and your rumors. Like, where do you get this rumor from? I, I scour the interwebs. All right. <laughs> Bring you the news. I thought so. The, the Call least... me Jim. Oh, Jimmy Olsen took pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Robbie Robertson. Uh, Call me Ben. All right. I guess the latest rumors I had heard that were semi-confirmed was that it's Doctor Strange is going to be involved in some way, and there's going to be a bunch of like multiverse 
style stuff. I don't know if this is like Peter going from reality to reality or more likely it'll be a thing where they film individual scenes that'll be shown like on screens and stuff or portals or something that him and Doctor Strange are looking at. And presumably there'll be like a three to five minute like crossover where you have all three of the Spider-Men in the same room talking about something or maybe they give they young point. Peter the advice. Yeah, they give each other a finger point and they, they do something like that. They already did that though, so that'd be really stupid. Yeah, yeah but, but you, you forget that at some point in X-Men 3, they they specifically had the Juggernaut say, I'm the Juggernaut, bitch, because of an internet meme. They put that in a major motion picture. I'm saying they did it already, though. Why would they do it again? Because that was, that was something. They, yeah. Because it worked well. And that was two days. And, and it was an end credit corny. scene. It was an end credit scene, and it was Spider-Man 2099. What would be great is if you have these three Spider-Men do the point, and then Oscar Isaac, who voiced Spider-Man 2099, have him play Spider-Man 2099 and go, guys, it's been done. And call him out on it. That way you make everybody happy because they did it, but they also acknowledge the fact that it's been played out. I'll get behind that one. I like it. This man should be right. That's all I'm saying. Because the way the movie's looking right now, they need him. <laughs> they need him. <laughs> so so you, you don't want Tommy McGuire and throwing a bunch of cars for Home Alone Amish? <laughs> a bunch man. of micro machines? It would be so fantastic if what the movie was was like Home Alone only in the Avengers Tower and it's like Tom Holland trying to keep out the other two Spider-Men. Like, is it like a Robert? super lit like, yeah. short film like, yeah. before the movie? Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah. You give us like 15 minutes of this type of yeah, bullshit with like no real explanation. That would be dope. That would be fantastic. <laughs> <That'd> be dope. <laughs> so someone, someone, the other same page I read the internet rumor on is like, they should move Tom Holland out of Avengers into the Defenders. The Defenders? What do you mean? Like basically, like the actual Defenders or the Netflix Defenders? I guess the Netflix Defenders because I heard I heard like with Daredevil, Daredevil, Daredevil and, them. and them, like kind of move Spider Man into that. I also heard that um, I don't think you don't Chris, fit the tone for that. Kristen Ritter is going to make a cameo in. Um, She-Hulk. Okay. So, so if, I am all for those def- those Netflix m- shows. Even though it shouldn't be called Defenders, but <clears throat> right, that's why I was clarifying which Defenders you meant. But I'm fine. Like again, if you're going to call them the Defenders, fine. I'm all for those shows being considered MCU canon because they don't contradict anything. Um, Agents of Shield does kind of because they kind of went their own way because the movies were like, oh. Did you want us to pay attention to what you were doing? Sorry, we're not doing that anymore. Because the Civil War would have been great if you had Inhumans involved. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. Or like the Shield re- Reformation and all that stuff that happened. We got all that in the TV show, but the movies just glossed over it. But do you think? Do you think the reason why they kind of don't mention the Defenders is because of the whole Netflix rights thing? Yeah. You think it was just a money thing, not just like. These are bad stories. Because they weren't. I mean, on the whole, those shows were pretty solid. You know, some were great, some were fine, and there were bad parts. But overall, like, those shows held their own. Like, it was an experiment. But I think there was probably some legal reason they couldn't, like, mention it. Or bring them into Endgame. Yeah, like, imagine if you had a portal open up and, like, Daredevil, Luke Cage, Danny, and Jessica... And, like, even Frank came out of that portal, and it was like, oh, they're coming from New York to help, because why not? You have everybody else. And there's definitely fan edits where they keep doing that, and then they bring in, like, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. Like, you don't need to do that, but you could easily have brought in some of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and... Or Fitz, you know, just, I don't know, I like Fitz. Fitz I mean, probably if, my favorite character. In uh, Fitz is great, but realistically, if you're bringing in this kind of fight, you want to bring in Quake. Or May. Uh, yeah, May. She at least can, like, fight. Fitz cannot. <laughs> but if we want to get technical, and we will, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Dan can correct me if and when I'm wrong, during the TV show, while Thanos was fighting them in, uh, would have been in Wakanda, the first time, before the snap. So, 
they were fighting Graviton in Chicago at the exact same time. That's why they weren't at the Thanos battle. They were already engaged in a battle with something else that could have ripped the planet apart. I will. So, in five years after the snap, I don't know where the hell they were. Probably, oh, they were in the future. They were. They were in the future. That's where they were. I, I mean, like, they, I mean, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. did say that there is a multiverse, and they kind of went that route. Too. Yeah. Um, I mean, even, I, I, I was saying one nice thing, they probably won't do because nobody listens to me, <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, you know, basically, basically, like when, um, like they're explaining to Hulk when if you don't return to the, the time soldiers, you create a time stream, and basically they did break time. The Avengers broke time in Endgame, um, and that's where that uh, Netflix shows actually take place. Is the whole separate timeline? When did they break time? What? Where? I guess where are you talking about? Remember, we, well, yeah, they I, broke time because Loki like disappears. So that's well, unless they get the, the cube back from Loki and put it back in the exact same spot. Well, the then you have to return Loki back to that exact yeah, same spot. the great thing about time travel is I could, if I appear now and steal this microphone and then spend ten years doing other things and then bring this microphone back to here, like a second after I took it, nothing's changed. You could, you could spend a hundred years with Loki running around with the cube as long as Loki and the cube go back to the same point where they were, it's fine. You gonna you gonna Bill and Ted it? Yeah, that's exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> that's basically what they'd be doing. They'd be Bill and Ted it. Like, you know, bring it back to the same spot, nothing changes. So I don't know, I mean that's probably the best way to do it. So that is all I have as far as news. Um we're gonna go ahead and wrap up session two and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to some questions and then call it a night. All right. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Peace.